Step aboard the Starship of Memory, and let's journey back to a time when the cosmos seemed both boundless and brimming with wonder. Cast your mind back to that inaugural encounter with the 1966 TV series that would become a cultural comet, Star Trek. Do you recall the hushed excitement as the screen flickered to life, unveiling the vastness of space and the intrepid crew that dared to traverse it? Perhaps your heart raced as the iconic phrase to boldly go where no one has gone before echoed through the vastness of your living room, igniting your imagination like a supernova. The year was 1966, and a television show was about to embark on a mission that would span decades and galaxies. As the episodes unfolded, you found yourself drawn to the diverse tapestry of characters, the unflappable Captain Kirk, the enigmatic Mr. Spock, the resourceful Uhura, and the passionate Dr. McCoy. Together, they navigated not only the uncharted regions of space, but also the uncharted territories of the human spirit. And oh, those moments that left an indelible mark on your soul. The first time the US Enterprise soared across the stars at warp speed, leaving streaks of light in its wake. The unforgettable encounters with strange new worlds and civilizations, each one a mirror reflecting our own human nature. The thought-provoking dilemmas that forced you to ponder ethical quandaries and moral dimensions. Now, as we prepare to delve into the lesser known corners of this groundbreaking show, let's keep that sense of wonder alive. From behind the scenes anecdotes to the genesis of beloved catchphrases, our journey will unearth facts that even the most avid Trekkie might not know. So, adjust your tricorder, set your facers to curious, and join us on this expedition through the cosmos of knowledge. 1966 Star Trek, unveiling the untold stories in the hallowed halls of Star Trek history, where the cosmos met the small screen, lies a tantalizing tale of an episode lost to the stars. Amid the captivating voyages of the Starship Enterprise, an intriguing script emerged, one that promised to showcase Milton Berle's dramatic prowess in a role that defied convention. Titled He Walked Among Us, the episode was a brainchild of writer Norman Spinrad envisioning Burl as a sociologist turned deity in a primitive society. Burl, an ardent fan of the series, sought to unveil his dramatic depth beyond comedic realms. Yet, the trajectory of the script took an unexpected turn. Gene L. Kuhn, another mastermind behind the series, rewrote Spinrad's creation into a comedic rendition. Incensed by the transformation, Spinrad's fury soared to cosmic heights, prompting him to advocate for the episode's scrapping. In a twist of fate, Gene Roddenberry, the series' visionary, aligned with Spinrad's sentiment, and the episode met its demise even before hitting the soundstage. Spinrad's He Walked Among Us remained a tantalizing, unmaterialized dream. The reverberations of Star Trek extend beyond its episodes, echoing even in phrases never uttered. Beam me up, Scotty, a pop culture catchphrase attributed to Captain Kirk, transcended the script. But a curious revelation emerges, Kirk never once utters this iconic phrase in the series. Variations like Scotty, beam us up, beam me up, and Scotty, beam me up color the show, but the exact combination remains elusive. The closest semblance materialized within the animated spin-off Star Trek, the animated series, yesteryear. Here, Kirk's lips form the words, beam us up, Scotty. Alas, the precise cocktail of words cherished by fans proved a distortion of memory. The enigma persists, encapsulating the intricate dance between cultural memory and televised fiction. Venturing northward to Canada, a peculiar metamorphosis emerged involving Sir Wilfrid Laurier, the face adorning the $5 bill. A phenomenon known as Spocking Fives materialized, where currency owners playfully transformed Laurier's visage into a striking semblance of Mr. Spock. The uncanny resemblance sparked widespread delight, mingling statesmanship with interstellar intrigue. In 2013, a seismic shift rippled through the fibers. The portrait of Laurier underwent modification, obscuring the Spock-like features. This subtle alteration aimed to sever the connection between the historical figure and the iconic Vulcan, discouraging further artistic tampering. The tapestry of 1966 second Star Trek woven with threads of untold tales and misremembered lines, endures as a cultural relic. These stories, much like the galaxies traversed by the US Enterprise, continue to captivate, inspire, and mystify, reminding us that even in the cosmos of imagination, truth and fiction entwine in an everlasting cosmic dance. 
Leonard Nimoy's subtle green hue and Star Trek makeup revealed in the iconic 1966 TV series Star Trek. Leonard Nimoy's portrayal of the logical Vulcan science officer, Mr. Spock, left an indelible mark on pop culture. Yet, beneath the iconic pointed ears and arched eyebrows lay a makeup secret that's remained somewhat hidden for decades. Nimoy's signature appearance as Spock required meticulous makeup application, including his distinctively arched eyebrows and, most notably, his faintly green-tinged skin. This subtle green hue was a subtle yet deliberate nod to Spock's Vulcan heritage and his green blood, a biological trait that set him apart from his human shipmates. Interestingly, due to the hand-mixed nature of the makeup used, the intensity of the green hue varied slightly across episodes, often making it imperceptible in many shots. The careful craftsmanship that went into creating Spock's appearance added an extra layer of authenticity to the character, reinforcing the show's commitment to intricate details. While the green tint might not have always been noticeable to the casual viewer, it played a vital role in enhancing the believability of Mr. Spock as an otherworldly being. Decades later, as Star Trek continues to captivate new generations of fans, Nimoy's portrayal of Spock and the subtle artistic choices that shaped his character's look serve as a testament to the enduring power of science fiction on television. Star Trek's unseen voyages, behind the scenes of the 1966 classic in the hallowed halls of 1960s television, Star Trek shimmered like a distant star, captivating audiences with its interstellar escapades. A lesser-known chapter in this cosmic journey unfolds with Pavel Chekhov's arrival in the show's second season. Marketed to broaden the show's appeal to a younger demographic, Chekhov's character sparked whispers of a Soviet backstory. Urban legends spun a tale of Gene Roddenberry crafting the character in response to Soviet complaints about their cosmic absence. However, records reveal no such grievance from the Soviet Union, squelching the narrative like a supernova. While the crew soared through space guided by stardates, NBC's programming warped through chronology into disarray. These stardates, meticulously woven by the producers to convey the show's timeline, suffered a temporal rift on air. Network executives, unfazed by the creator's vision, shuffled episodes without heed to Stardate's sequence. The audience, left starstruck, puzzled over the erratic passage of time in the series. Preserving the Enterprise legacy is the 11-foot studio model, a celestial relic now on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington. DC, this meticulously crafted artifact. Every contour a testament to the show's dedication, offers an intimate connection to the voyages of Captain Kirk and his crew. As spectators gaze upon this vessel that graced countless galaxies, the spirit of Star Trek lives on, reminding us of the indelible impact of a show that dared to journey beyond the stars. Unveiling the enigmatic origins of Captain Kirk's nickname for McCoy in Star Trek in the annals of television history, few shows have achieved the iconic status and enduring cultural impact as the 1966 TV series, Star Trek. Amid the galactic adventures and interstellar diplomacy, a lesser-known facet of the show's lore lies in the intriguing nickname bestowed upon Dr. Leonard McCoy by none other than Captain James T. Kirk himself. Bones, as McCoy came to be affectionately known, carries with it a rich linguistic history. This moniker, often thought to allude to the skeletal framework of the human body, has roots that stretch deeper than the cosmos explored by the US Enterprise. Gene Roddenberry, the show's creator, drew inspiration from the colloquial term sawbones, a slang often attributed to surgeons, particularly those in military or naval contexts. This terminology, resonating with the show's creator and the cast and crew, found its origin in the medical practices of yesteryears. Amputation, a frequent recourse for a variety of ailments, was humorously encapsulated by the term. Interestingly, the genesis of Kirk's moniker for McCoy was its singular. In the episode Star Trek, a piece of the action, the captain referred to the good doctor as Sawbones. The threads of linguistic evolution continued as the show progressed. Scripts of Star Trek sure leave Penn Sulu addressing McCoy with the same moniker, underscoring its nuanced place in the show's fabric. Yet, another intriguing layer was added when McCoy himself alluded to the nickname's origin during a conversation with Kirk. Amidst discussing the aftermath of his divorce, the doctor lamented how he was left with nothing but his bones. This alternate etymology adds a personal touch to a seemingly straightforward nickname. 
a window into the multifaceted relationships woven by the creators. Star Trek's legacy remains not only in its pioneering vision of the future, but also in its linguistic choices that anchor characters to their historical contexts. As the US Enterprise continues its perpetual voyage through time and space, the moniker Bones persists, a linguistic artifact connecting its inhabitants to the bygone days of naval and medical lore. As we bid adieu, let the cosmic tapestry of Star Trek's 1966 TV series linger in the constellations of your mind. Just as the Starship Enterprise embarked on journeys to the far reaches of the universe, so too did it carry us into realms of boundless imagination and unity. Each photon torpedo fired, each beam me up whispered into the ether, resonates as a testament to human potential and the infinite prospects of the cosmos. In the vibrant tapestry of your own memories, where do the threads of Star Trek 66 interweave? Was it Captain Kirk's fearless leadership, Spock's enigmatic logic, or McCoy's unfiltered humanity that etched itself into your heart? Maybe it was the promise of exploration, of encountering the unknown with wide-eyed wonder, that kept you tethered to the show's warp core. The legacy of Star Trek transcends time, beckoning us to reflect on our shared voyage as inhabitants of this pale blue dot. So, as the closing credits roll and the stars wink above, take a moment to journey back in time with your own reflections. Share your thoughts, your favorite moments, the quotes that echo through the corridors of your mind like the ship's hum. Your connection to Star Trek isn't just about a TV series, it's about the cosmos within you, the uncharted territories of your own aspirations and dreams. And as we navigate our own uncharted waters, let's draw inspiration from those who dare to boldly go, to seek out new life and new civilizations. Thank you, dear seeker of the stars, for joining this cosmic contemplation. Your time and interest light up the galaxy of shared human experience. Until we meet again among the stars, live long and prosper, and may your memories of Star Trek forever inspire your own odyssey.